This is our last episode of the year. And I just wanted to say Merry Christmas. You can say it back to me, it's okay, it's totally cool. Thank you, yes. We celebrate Muslim Christmas at home. I'm serious, we got the tree and everything. My baby daughter, she saw the tree, she's like, Dada, is this for Jesus? And I was like, no baby, it's for capitalism. That's what it means to be American. But around the world, we're also known for something else. So what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Americans? They eat a lot of food, like the portions are like really big. The Americans are very fat. You guys dress horrible. You guys eat terrible. They are fat, dumb people. If an American was watching this, what would you want to say to them? You're all fat. <laughs> okay, that sweaty leprechaun isn't wrong. 32% of US adults are overweight. Another 40% of Americans are obese. Now, this isn't about physical appearance or the cruelty around body image. This is about the health problems that can come with obesity. When you're obese, your chances of having a stroke are 64% higher. Heart disease, 50% higher. Type two diabetes, as much as 20 times higher. And the risk of being on TLC, 100 times higher. <laughs> Seriously, without obesity, TLC would just be a glorified green card program. <laughs> That's a real show. Obesity used to be just an American problem, but not anymore. Obesity is increasing all over the world. In Brazil, every year we have one million new cases of obesity. China will have nearly 50 million obese children by 2025. As India's economy grows, so does the temptation for many people to eat more and do less. Now there's OverweightShoddy.com, an Indian dating site exclusively for obese people. Oh, come on, India! <laughs> A dating site for the large-hearted? <laughs> Sounds like you're gonna have a stroke on the first date. They're like, overweightshadi.com. Find the one who makes half your face droop. <laughs> Look, obesity has become a worldwide epidemic. Since the 1970s, obesity has nearly tripled globally. And a big factor is everyone now eats like Americans. More sugar, more fat, more meat. Even in places you would never expect. Ordering takeout takes on a whole new meaning. In Gaza, buckets of fried chicken smuggled under an international border with the fried chicken carried through tunnels like these. With no big fast food chains in Gaza to compete, the smugglers have a finger licking success. That is incredible. You guys, an American colonel successfully invaded the Middle East. <laughs> Think about everything Gaza doesn't have. Electricity, medicine, Freedom, the one thing that gets through the blockade, those 11 herbs and spices. <laughs> now here's the thing about global obesity. It's not an accident. Thanks to a combination of federal policy and corporate greed, the US now exports its diet to every corner of the world. And that's what I wanna focus on tonight. How America is making the world fat. In a weird way, it's kind of amazing. Most of human history was a fight against starvation, but today, for the first time ever, more people are overfed than underfed. And somehow, Christian Bale has been both. <laughs> but just because people are getting more calories doesn't mean they're getting more nutrition. Processed food broke this whole thing open. A lot of you probably know about American food companies manipulating food science, engineering it to be addictive. They even tricked us into drinking Capri Sun. How did that even happen? Dude, at my school, they banned soda, but then they gave us a sugary blood bag? That shit was an IV of diabetes. But one of the most underhanded things food companies do is spread misinformation. Almost every major food company is guilty of this. But there's one that's bad in 193 countries. Coca-Cola. <laughs> Yep, that's Bollywood star Amir Khan going full long duck dong. Now keep in mind, this dude is a respected actor in India. Imagine if here in the States, 
Ed Harris agreed to play Aunt Jemima. We'd be like, Ed, why? In the late 90s, scientists started publishing research on how bad soda was for you. So Coke pushed back and paid for its own research. They funded nearly 400 academic studies, most of which that ignored the link between diet and obesity. They also pretty much invented their own research institute, which did not go well. Coca-Cola is under fire this morning in the battle over America's obesity epidemic. The soda giant donated millions to spread the message that Americans pay too much attention to what they eat and drink instead of focusing on how much they exercise. Most of the focus in the popular media and in the scientific press is, oh, they're eating too much, eating too much, eating too much, blaming fast food, uh, blaming sugary drinks, and so on. And there's really virtually no compelling evidence. <laughs> OK, wait. That video clarifies two major things. A, Coke is basically saying diet doesn't matter as long as you exercise. And B, now we know how it would look if George R. Martin took ketamine. <laughs> look, this advice is bullshit. Trying to lose weight only through exercise is like trying to get pregnant only by playing Pony by Genuine. <laughs> like, it might help, but you're missing a key component. That component is sex. <laughs> People were so pissed about these claims, the CEO had to write an op-ed called Coca-Cola will do better, which was better than the original title, you're not the dumb fucks we thought you were. <laughs> Basically, Coke got caught doing horrible things here, so they went abroad. It's also known as the Roman Polanski method. <laughs> Look. Why do you think he lives in France? It's not because of the croissants. <laughs> now, one of Coke's biggest targets was China. Back in the 1970s, Coke was the first American company to enter communist China. Now, it controls almost half of the Chinese soft drink market. In that same time, the number of people who were overweight or obese shot up like crazy. The Chinese government tried to stop it, but then Coke stepped in. Coca-Cola got the Chinese government to emphasize physical activity as a means to deal with its obesity problem rather than uh, telling the public they should drink fewer sodas. If they can't sell it in the United States, they're going to try to sell it overseas. First in America, now in China. This is the same playbook. They're like, hey, you should go work out, but then make sure you chug a two-liter bottle of Coke. Now, Coke denies this, but come on. In China, Coke funds a nonprofit called Ilsi that is so connected to the government, some of the staff are also senior officials at China CDC. In one case, Ilsi wrote obesity prevention guidelines that promoted exercise instead of drinking less soda. And the Chinese health ministry just published those guidelines as official national policies. Do you realize how nuts this is? China doesn't listen to anyone. But then they cave to Coke? <laughs> like, every day, the international community is like, please, China, respect human rights. And they're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tibet is ours. Taiwan isn't real. We're rounding up Muslims. There is no Google. And we're tracking your faces. And we're like, OK, OK, fine. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll shut up and dribble. Then Ilsi came in. <laughs> And they're like, tell people Coke is good for them. And China was like, OK, just don't hurt us, soda gods. <laughs> Ilsi denies that they have this kind of pull in China. But look at the places that they're influencing health policy. They're in at least 14 other global branches, including India and Brazil, with financing from Coke and other companies, including Hershey, Pepsi, and Starbucks. Now, honestly, it's kind of heartwarming to see all the rival gangs working together. <laughs> it's like the United Nations, but effective. <laughs> but corporate fuckery alone wouldn't be enough to cause global obesity. The other part is that junk food is cheap. And for that, we have to give props to the US government. Back in the early 70s, the price of food was skyrocketing because of a bunch of nerd reasons. Just <laughs> pause and read this later. So President Nixon incentivized farmers to grow more crops, especially corn. And all that cheap corn changed the modern diet. High fructose corn syrup is the sweetener used in the majority of those so-called sugary drinks. The beverage industry began using high fructose corn syrup in 1980 because it is 20 to 70 percent less expensive than sugar. High fructose corn syrup is sweet, cheap, 
and make stuff last forever. That's why it's in a lot of junk food and candy. Do you guys realize what this means? Richard Nixon was the real life Willy Wonka. <laughs> Okay, wait, wait. now technically that's not a fair comparison. Willy Wonka only killed four children. <laughs> In 20 years, high fructose corn syrup consumption went up a thousand percent. So even if you're trying to eat healthy, you cannot get away from corn syrup. We put it in everything, bread, yogurt, ketchup, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> I mean, come on, that hair isn't gonna grease itself. This is the American obesity rate over time. In this moment right here is when companies started dumping high fructose corn syrup into everything. Look at this line. It looks like Prince Andrew's pulse when they asked him about Jeffrey Epstein. He's like, the jet? I didn't know about the jet. I would never ride on the jet. Now, American junk food didn't just stay in America. It was like an NYU junior. It went around the world wreaking havoc. It was out here in these streets being fucking ratchet. But here is where things get interesting. It was able to do that because of free trade. The free trade system that evolved since World War II aimed to promote peace and prosperity. It did that by opening up countries to trade and removing the barriers between them. The idea of people trade with each other to mutual advantage, everybody grows more and makes more money. The benefits are lower prices, more product choice, more economic growth. That's the basic idea. Everyone is connected and economies grow faster together. And it works a lot of the time. But it's not always great for workers and it helps rich countries economically bully poorer countries, especially when we want them to eat our garbage food. Take Samoa, the best Pacific Islands and the second best Girl Scout cookie. <laughs> it's frozen Thin Mints. I'm not even gonna argue with you guys. Not room temperature, those are disgusting. Those are toothpaste cookies, frozen. <laughs> Now, th the traditional Samoan diet is healthy. Coconut, banana, seafood, taro. Now, I'll be real, I have no idea what taro is. <laughs> I thought it was a nightclub in Vegas, seriously. Are any of these taro? I have no idea. That one isn't even a fruit, it's a fucking Pokemon. <laughs> get out of here, Cherubi, get, get skedaddle. Now, after World War II, Americans were eating a lot of turkey. We loved it, except for one part. It's marketed as a turkey tail. But what it really is, is that gland-like part that attaches the tail to the bird, and the bird uses the oils from the gland to preen its feathers. All right, that feels inappropriate. <laughs> this is like a turkey upskirt photo. <laughs> now, obviously, a lot of Americans didn't want to eat oily ass fat. So poultry companies started dumping turkey tails on Samoa where meat was scarce. At one point, the average Samoan was eating 44 pounds of turkey tails a year. And 93% of Samoans became overweight or obese. And the other 7% was Dwayne The Rock Johnson. All of this <laughs> alarmed health experts. I'm on a mission to get rid of every turkey butt from our Pacific Islander communities on the continent, Hawaii, and in the Pacific. Okay, wait, imagine that being your mission in life. <laughs> People are like, I'm gonna cure cancer. I'm gonna solve global warming. She's like, I will eradicate turkey butts. <laughs> what about leukemia? I said turkey butts. <laughs> and guess what? She nailed it. The Samoan government banned all turkey tail imports in 2007, but it wasn't a happy ending. Samoa had been trying to join the World Trade Organization or the WTO for years. The only problem was America is a very powerful member and U.S. poultry farmers hated the ban on turkey tails. So conveniently, the WTO blocked Samoa's membership until it agreed to lift the ban on turkey butts. The WTO was straight up acting like a fraternity. <laughs> They're like, hey, you wanna join the WTO? They're like, yeah, man. <laughs> well, you gotta eat 44 pounds of turkey ass. <laughs> Two butts, one cup, and keep it down. And they're like, all right, ah, ah. Now, Samoa is far from alone here. After signing trade deals with the USA, a lot of poor countries' diets fall apart. But there's one trade deal that has done more to spread obesity than any other. NAFTA, one of the worst deals ever made by any country. A complete and total 
disaster. The NAFTA disaster, I call it. The worst trade deal ever made. The stupidest deal, one of the truly stupid deals of our time. You know how I feel about NAFTA. I think NAFTA is the worst. NAFTA. Anybody ever hear of NAFTA? Why is Trump doing ASMR? <laughs> NAFTA. Now, Trump would be right if he was only talking about obesity. But we know how he feels about junk food. Why are his hands like that? I don't know if he's about to eat those burgers or grab them by the pickle. Look, I got to curse less. I hear that children watch the show. Now, in 1993, America, Canada, and Mexico signed NAFTA. And almost right away, it began destroying Mexico's food system. Mexico became a dumping ground for cheap, low-nutrient, highly processed foods from the United States, causing diets here to mirror those of their northern neighbors. These days, most young women don't like to cook. They prefer the ease of buying pizza or Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay, that's next level. She went on Al Jazeera News to put her daughter on blast. She's like, women these days, they don't cook, they're not getting married. And what happened to that nice boy, Roberto? Women these days should call him back. <laughs> NAFTA flooded Mexico with American corn, junk food, and soda. Imports of American high fructose corn syrup shot up 1,200%. And the health effects were catastrophic. Before NAFTA, about a third of Mexico was overweight or obese. Today, it's 75%. And the leading cause of death in Mexico is diabetes. Think of all the violent shit going on in Mexico. Gangs, drug smugglers, Cabo. <laughs> and yet, the most lethal thing in Mexico is flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> Mexican soft drink consumption is also among the highest in the world. And one company in particular has been wreaking havoc. Take a wild guess. Mexico has become the biggest consumer of Coca-Cola in the world. The children do not have drinking water in the schools. So they drink soft drinks. Babies have Coca-Cola in their bottles instead of a milk formula. Babies have Coca-Cola in their bottles. You can't just swap those. Like, imagine going to McDonald's and ordering a Big Mac, fries, and a large breast milk. <laughs> you would get arrested. <laughs> but hey, it's a trade deal, you guys. Mexico must be sending us bad food in return, right? Mexico surpassed Canada and China this year as the United States' largest trade partner. The U.S. brought in $13.4 billion worth of fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Under NAFTA, some 70% of Mexico's agricultural production of fresh fruit and vegetables is exported to the U.S. Think about that. We drowned them in coke and diabetes, and then took their avocados. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, avocados can be bad for you, but for a very different reason. A growing number of injuries are being reported from cutting this great food. It's got its own social media hashtag, hashtag avocado hand. The latest victim of avocado hand. She needed reconstructive surgery after she slashed her fingers. This is the make or break condiment, no matter where you are, like Chipotle, Subway. I know! I almost went ISIS on my thumb that day. <laughs> it's a close one. Because of free trade, Mexico can't protect itself from American food companies. This is what happened when Mexico tried to limit U.S. corn syrup. Mexico said this is a bad idea, and they put a... Um, wait, 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 come on, come uh, on, wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. Nobody's gonna pay attention to that clip. <laughs> this dude looks like he just rimmed a chinchilla. Come on, take care of this. Blur it. Okay, good. Carry on. They put a tariff onto high fructose corn syrup. Okay, no, no, stop, 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 stop. Now we're thinking about him rimming a chinchilla. It's not working. Okay, basically, this nutritionist sea lion is saying that Mexico tried to reduce the amount of corn syrup coming into the country twice. Don't laugh at that, okay? This is very serious. But just like in Samoa, the WTO struck it down. What's even worse is we are still fucking with Mexico to this day. In a few weeks, Congress is expected to pass the USMCA. It's basically the new NAFTA. And the White House put in restrictions to make it harder for Mexico to put warning labels on junk food. Probably because Trump would rather have warning labels on people. No. He's like, what's your percentage Guatemalan? 15, that's too much, folks. <laughs> now, Mexico has a free trade deal. 
but they're not free to do much of anything. Free trade was supposed to improve lives and lift people out of poverty, but it's also drowning some of the world's most vulnerable people in junk food. And you wanna know the scariest part? Pretty soon, every country on Earth is gonna get its own TLC show. 